Hello, my name is Helen Bethel and I'm a registered genetic counsellor for both the NHS and also for Hemochromatosis UK. And this is a webinar about the different types of karyotypes you can have with hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis is an autosomal recessive condition. The autosomal part of the name means that it doesn't matter whether you're male or female in terms of whether you inherit the condition. The recessive part refers to the fact that we have two genes, one that we inherit from our mothers, one that we inherit from our fathers. And in recessive conditions, you need to inherit a variant, a genetic spelling mistake, on both copies of your gene in order to be at risk of developing symptoms. Now in hemochromatosis, the gene which is most commonly affected is the HFE or high iron gene. So on the slide, we have a man who's got two copies of the HFE gene. Now there are two common genetic variants in the white Caucasian population. They are C282Y and H63D. C282Y is the most severe of the two variants and can cause more severe phenotypes or symptoms. Whilst H63D is a more milder variant, which often isn't associated with symptoms. So if we were to view the man here on the slide as having just one copy of the C282Y variant, well, we would refer to him as a carrier. That is because he carries a single copy of the um, spelling mistake or the variant C282Y, but his second copy of the gene is, doesn't have any variant and therefore is working and sufficient to compensate for the copy that isn't working. Therefore, this gentleman is not at risk of developing symptoms. If this man was to have inherited two copies of the C282Y, well, then we would refer to this as being homozygote. So homo meaning same, and so homozygote that he's got two copies of the C282Y variant. In this case, this gentleman would have two copies of the gene, both which were um, defective, and therefore he would be um, at a high risk of developing symptoms of hemochromatosis as an adult. However, for, for reasons that we don't fully yet understand, there are some patients who are homozygous who don't develop symptoms, but generally speaking, if, you were to div if you, this is your genotype, then you would be at an increased risk of developing symptoms, and we would recommend that you were followed up. Let's think about now about H63D. So H63D is a milder variant. So for patients who've inherited just one copy of the variant, such as is now shown on the slide, we would again refer to this as being a carrier. And because it's only a mild variant and because this patient has got a second full copy that is fully working, we, would, we really wouldn't expect this patient to develop any symptoms. And if you are, if you are a carrier of H63D and you do develop symptoms of iron overload, then it's important that it's investigated as to why this may be, because it may be that there's other separate genetic factors or environmental factors which may be contributing. If we were to consider this man and he's inherited two copies of the H63D variant, well again, he would be a homozygote, homo meaning the same, but this time it would be for the H63D gene. Again, because this is a milder variant, the vast majority of patients with this genotype don't develop symptoms. Therefore, if when you've had your genetic test, your iron levels are normal, we wouldn't recommend that you, are, you need to have any further monitoring of your iron levels. However, again, if your iron levels are raised, then again, this might need investigating for other causes. Let's think about now about a patient who might inherit one C282Y and one H63D. In this case, this patient is a heterozygote because they've got two different copies of the gene, but because they have two different variants, so they have a variant in both copies of their gene, we we'll refer to them as a compound heterozygote. So you can see on the screen that the man has got one copy with a H63D fault in and one copy with a C282Y fault in. Therefore, he doesn't have one full complete working copy of the HFE gene. So more often than not, 95% of patients with this genotype don't develop symptoms because the, H the H63D variant is so mild that it's still sufficient to make sure that the levels of iron are maintained in the body. However, in 5% of patients with this genotype, they can develop symptoms. Therefore, we would recommend that if you do have this genotype, that you have your iron and ferritin levels checked every three years. So that was a whistle-stop tour to the different um, carrier types to, um, of hemochromatosis. If you'd like to know more about the inheritance, then please look up my other webinar, which goes over the inheritance of hemochromatosis in more detail. Thanks for listening.